Despite the fact that the S5, S1 and S1H can output ProRes RAW via HDMI to the Atmos Ninja V, a lot of people are still using the internal codecs more often than not. In fact, I'd probably say that I use the internal codec 70% of the time and I only really record ProRes on shoots where I know another person or team will be doing the post-production. So today I want to compare the internal codex to ProRes RAW and maybe even do a few blind tests to see if you guys can actually tell the difference. I'm now going to show you the same sequence twice, one labelled A and one labelled B. You will then have to try and figure out which one is ProRes RAW and of course which one is the internal codec. I understand that the resolution difference will make the comparison a little bit unfair at 25 frames per second, but this video will be exported and uploaded in 4K, so technically the 5.9K will be downsampled just like the internal codec. Anyway, let's get into it. So, could you tell a huge difference between ProRes RAW and the internal codecs of the Panasonic S5? If you could and you think you know the answer, then please pause this video now, go to the comments and then leave a comment saying which one you think was the ProRes RAW footage. You done that? Sweet, okay. So, I can actually reveal that the ProRes RAW footage was sequence A. Of course, I'm not too sure how much YouTube has compressed the footage to bring results close to each other, but only I'll be able to judge that, of course, once the video is actually up on YouTube. Working with raw footage does make the post-production workflow a little longer, and you will need to spend more time working with the footage to get it looking how you'd like. You also have the option of working within an SDR or HDR library when using ProRes RAW, and that in itself can be quite tricky to wrap your head around. I have some videos on the pipeline that delve more deeply into the differences and will ultimately give you more information on the way that ProRes RAW essentially preserves all the full dynamic range and color data that can be used to its full potential in a HDR workflow. But for this video, I use a simple and far more common SDR workflow that essentially uses tone mapping to conform all of that data into a more universally viewable standard dynamic range video. The benefits of RAW will only become apparent to those who are looking to push their footage to its limits. So if you're someone that doesn't gray too heavily and keeps things pretty simple after converting the log footage to a Rec.709 color space, then you probably won't notice too much of a difference apart from the added flexibility of, let's say for example, changing the white balance and ISO values after the footage has been captured. It's also worth noting for those who are new to raw video that since it's a read up directly from the sensor itself, the image won't have been processed in any way. So therefore, noise reduction will have to be done manually in post. That's why raw footage tends to look more noisy straight out of the camera compared to the internal codex, and denoising can bog down your editing computer quite a bit if it has a lot of work to do. So I guess the real question you have to ask yourself is whether the extra work in editing, along with the much larger file sizes, is worth it for the results that you're getting with raw. Um, I mean, in my opinion, RAW is definitely worth it for some projects, but not for every single thing that I record. And the internal codecs on the S5 are robust enough and definitely look more than passable for 90% of the work that I do. So for me, RAW is something that I treat myself to once in a while. Um, but then again, I guess it's really up to you whether you can justify shooting RAW all of the time. And if you can, then you'll be very happy with the experience that ProRes RAW does give you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it somewhat useful, entertaining, or interesting. And if you did, then please subscribe because I do make a lot of videos here so around the Panasonic S5, uh, the L mount and all that sort of stuff. So if you're into that sort of thing, then this channel will be for you. And yeah, thanks again for watching and hopefully I shall see you in the next one.